Hello, and welcome to the next top celebrity side chick. I'm your host, Kyra Skanks. And I have my judges here with me, Princess, the celebrity stylist of all the top side chicks. We have Stevie J. You know who he is. And then we have Angel, who is our winner from season 12 of the next top celebrity side chick. Ladies, I have four badass biddies in front of me, but I have only three Instagram photos in my hands. These photos represent the ladies that are in the running for the next top celebrity side chick. The names that I do not call will need to pack her overnight bag along with her belongings and go home. The first name I'm going to call Bonnie. Our resident wifey is learning how to be a side chick. Embrace that inner side chick. Remember, make it wifey, but make it side chick. Congratulations. You're in the running for becoming our next celebrity top side chick. The next day I'm going to call. Sierra. Congratulations. You're still in the running for being our next top celebrity side chick. Deja and Alexis, please step forward. I have two ladies in front of me, but only one photo left in my hand. Deja, you have everything that qualifies you to be the next top celebrity side chick. You leave the hotel before he even wakes up. You don't order room service. But the judges think you have an attitude, bad attitude with a capital A. And no DJ, rapper, basketball player is going to want to be on the road away from wifey and have to deal with your attitude. You take great Instagram photos and you know how to navigate a DM better than any girl here. But the judges don't think you have what it takes to be a next top celebrity side chick. Will you be able to take that movie bag and play your role? Or will you leak a photo to the shade room when your NFL pay doesn't return your text messages? No, no, I definitely wouldn't do that. Oh, oh. She's a person. Oh. Deja. show with Sammy Approved. I'm your host Sammy and this week we have a lot of exciting things to talk about. This week's Don't At Me includes three topics. I wanted to keep it short. One, Operation Meltdown. Two, Future's Save Me album. And I had a lot to say about that. Three, condoms. Yep, good old latex. We're gonna get into that and a little bit more in just a moment but first I must toss it off 
to me in the back of my good old faithful green machine where I talk to Atlanta native movement trainer, a dancer, model, muse, and just overall great friend of mine, Keepsaya Gip. And we ask her a few questions about her journey and the beauty of life because that's what this is all about. So take a look. I'm just gonna sit down and ask you a few questions, yes. Keepsaya, about um, just life really in general. So first question, who or what inspires you the most? Oh, that's easy. My mother, J-O-I, the original, the trailblazer, all that. My mother was secretly low-key, made history. She was one of the first black Calvin Klein models to be published along with, alongside Kate Moss. Um, she could have really gone all the way, but she didn't because still wanted to sing. Still wanted to sing. <laughs> so uh, I feel like I'm, I'm holding the torch on that end and taking it all the way. Yes, yeah, and I, like I said, really didn't know much about your background and like your history of like I mean you were born to two parents who were obviously um, a big part of the industry and just like dope stuff so prior to our introduction with Byron I was just like oh, okay cool she's an amazing model but like then to know the layers of like what and even knowing that I didn't know that so that's dope okay so moving along who or what are you currently obsessed with? This could be a food, this could be a place, this could be a person, anything. What are you obsessed with right now? Okay, listen. I like mess at home. <laughs> and um, I've been getting a very big kick out of Queens Court, if you're unfamiliar. Um, it's Kaya and T.S. Madison. But really, Kaya started it. She's been shading people on the internet since like 2007. What? Since my school, not mine. But um, okay. I love her. Those uh, videos are like an hour long of just pure shade, and I love it. I love a good shade. So what type of shade? Like, what is she talking about on these things? Like Girl, anything? Anybody who is in the in in the media mm -hmm. and they have some shit going on, she's gonna speak on it. But she's speaking on it from her perspective and it's just all shade like all shade just reading and them for filth for filth and i live and i live well i guess i'm gonna have to check that out because i never too. seen i always see it on social media like i just never actually watch it so it's on youtube it is okay i'm, I'm gonna check court, it out honey. queen's court honey t shade <laughs> so why we talked that about the fact that you are a model and um your all the dope work that and content that you're producing but like why model why the fashion industry for you it's natural um my parents were both of them were very big influencers on me as far as like what i like to wear and being comfortable pretty much just doing whatever i feel like doing right like this is what i i feel like throwing on these fur pants today not fur pants yes i'm gonna do the fur pants and so that's what's going on. And it's really just that. And um, it was just natural. Like before I got into modeling, I was a trained dancer, like full blown dancer, ballet. Yeah. Wow. And I thought I was going to college for that. Second semester, senior year, I just woke up and was like, fuck it. I'm going to drop all my dance classes. Wow. <laughs> and that's what I did. And I, I kept tap. That's the only thing. Yeah, I kept that. <laughs> but I decided I was going to come to Atlanta and really pursue it and stamp my city and then move from there. So where were you going to school? Where were you at? What, in L.A.? Oh, you were in L.A.? Yeah, I graduated high school in L.A. Oh. I never even went. Okay, okay. To I didn't make it that far because I knew exactly what I, when I locked in, I locked in. Got you. Yeah, got you. Okay. Um... What do you think the biggest challenge for you has been uh, pursuing fashion and being in the fashion industry? Um, honestly, I'm going through my battle right now. And that's making people believe in me like how I believe in myself. Um, I'm not signed. I think I might have mentioned that, but I am not signed um, on purpose. I want to create a demand for myself because I know I am able to create very great content with no help. So 
if I can do that and I can push it and I can make people be like, oh, she's doing all this great stuff. She's involved with a lot of people and, you know, nobody has hands on her. Then you know you have to come up off that check. Come up off that check. Say that. Run me my money. Hello? <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, I think it's, um, I mean, even in Atlanta, let's talk about just like, being in Atlanta and like the fashion industry and where that is, if it exists. Atlanta doesn't get it yet. They're trying, you know, my peers, the people who are doing what they're supposed to be doing and, and being the influencers on that tip, I know, them, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of like, people still don't get it. I, I'm born and raised here. I'm, I call myself SWATS royalty. If you don't know what that means, Southwest Atlanta. <laughs> I'm SWATS royalty and people treat me like I am a unicorn in my own city and act like I They've never seen me before, but it's like you have right. I We've spoke before but every single time I go out people act like I'm a brand new person. I don't know why Girl, you be switching up their hair. That's why I can't recognize you sometimes girl. No, that's real though A lot of people in Atlanta do that and I don't understand but then it's like a lot of people in our industry do not really from here so they don't really have the same upbringing. They don't get it yet, but they're getting there, and I'm, I'm forcing it. So, yeah. Well, we appreciate you for putting on for the culture yeah. and in, in your industry, and I wish you much success in that. Yeah. All right, so for this next portion, Kitsai is going to show me her best, or show me how to do her best catwalk. Yay. Okay, so basically all you want to remember is to cross your feet, one in front of the other. Make sure your chin is up, shoulders back, and walk with confidence. Great learning about Keepsaya, and I added a little something extra for flavor in there. Uh, Keepsaya has the fiercest walk I've ever seen grace this green earth. Um, so shout out to sis because mine could use a little bit more work, I must say. And I think I've improved a little bit since we shot that. But hey, neither here nor there. I will be at your next sip and tip class so I can gain a little bit more confidence and an even more fierce walk. Mm, let's get it. But for this week's Don't At Me segment, the moment you've all been waiting for, we're going to first talk about Operation Meltdown. So, let's talk about the jug of the year. <laughs> Shell corporations, millions in fines, and a sting operation in New York City. I know that sounds like an episode of Law & Order Criminal Intent. but I kid you not, it's actually a crackdown on ice cream trucks. According to Mayor Bill de Blasio, the city seized 46 ice cream trucks a couple Wednesdays ago in Operation Meltdown after these operators of the vehicles violated traffic laws and then evaded fines for nearly a decade. So, jug of the decade, actually. As these vehicle owners were passing out popsicles and bringing joy to the neighborhood, um, they were also racking up about 22,000 in summonses and $4.5 million in fines for traffic violations. Mm. Yeah, that's a lot of money, okay? And you know the government, especially in these overpopulated cities like New York City, Washington, D.C., and even Atlanta, they, they make their money from these tickets and, and, and traffic violations. So the operators have been cited even further, uh, running red lights, parking near fire hydrants and blocking crosswalks amongst other things, literally doing any and everything they wanted to do. Uh, but the way they got away with it is very interesting. So the operators created dozens of shell companies um, 
and systematically re-registered these vehicles under the Department of Motor Vehicles under names of different companies. Jug of the century. <laughs> By the time the city's finance department even realized that this was going on and tried to collect debt, uh, there would be no trace of those companies because they didn't exist because they just keep re-registering them. And when I tell you, they done ran off on the plug not one time, not two times, but thrice. I wish I had thought of this. Honestly, I'm thinking about all the times that I avoided driving a car in these big cities for this reason. And whole time, all I had to do was invest in an ice cream truck. Man, had I known, I would have definitely invested in an ice cream truck or a few. Bringing joy to the hood whilst never paying for a ticket again. Oh, beautiful. Magnifique. <laughs> so it actually is funny because it reminds me of this episode of The Simpsons. I'm a huge Simpsons fan where Fat Homer steals the ice cream truck. So just for a little joy and a little humor, take a look. I heard your dad went into a restaurant and ate everything in the restaurant and they had to close the restaurant. Hey, my dad may have gained a little weight, but he's not some kind of food crazed maniac. Uh, uh, oh, the raspberry. <laughs> Workers, please, there'll be time for the frozen pudding wagon later. You still owe me ten more Iroquois twists. Ten high, yeah, yeah. Oh. And nine high, yeah, yeah. Oh. Get away, damn it! Run for your lives! I'll take a rocket, Bob! What can I get for 30 cents? Let go! I gotta get to the cage! And now for Future's Save Me album. So, as we know, Future just dropped his album and. The first thing I noticed is that it's classified as R&B and soul. That's a little different for a uh, future. Usually, you know, you classify it as a hip hop album. You know, he's collaborated with the likes of Drake and Zaytoven and the list goes on. So I wasn't expecting to see R&B and soul, but I was thinking, you know, maybe there will be some funk. You know, he's gonna be doing a little bit more singing than usual, uh, but then I press play. And my second thought would be, does Future really need saving? Or is he cap? And we're gonna get into that a little bit. But first, watch this clip. I feel like then they're gonna be like, oh, his music changed because he ain't drinking lean no more. Oh, I can hear it when he changing. It's just like, and people are like, damn, why you don't even say it? It's like, but it just be hard when your fans so used to you certain kind of, a certain kind of way as that certain persona, mm -hmm. you be afraid to change. You be like, you're, you're afraid if they not gonna even accept me. No more. So in that clip, you see that he admits to his fans that he was a little skeptical about admitting that he stopped doing lean and stopped doing drugs that he once talked about in his songs. But then fast forward to this album and he's talking about doing drugs. I'm like, maybe Future recorded these years ago before he admitted this year that he wasn't going to do it anymore. So you continue to rap about doing drugs, but we don't, we aren't really certain if you do or you don't do drugs. I mean, it is what it is. If that is your lifestyle, I am not going to discourage you from talking about things that you actually experience. However, if you don't, then there's a problem. I will talk about one line that I did enjoy on this album and one song that is actually a bop. Please tell me. Um, the line where he says, Please tell me I can buy Chanel for you. I would like to see it. Mm -hmm. I would like to see it. Yes. Future, you can buy Chanel for me. Um, you can probably buy Chanel for any woman and she would never disagree with you. So there, that is something that actually resonated with me. And I will not lie to say that, you know, there were one or two bops on the Save Me album. Unlike many women, um, I can confidently say that I actually was still a fan of Future. Like, before Tony Montana, before I came up beefing it up at Howard, like, I was a true Dirty Sprite fan, okay? And I'm sure all of my bros and who are a part of the Future Hive will disagree with me on this statement, but overall, this album, it sucked. Mm -hmm. It wasn't good, nope. I was disappointed. And I think I'm kind of washing my hands with it and I will resign from the future hive. Yes, uh, no longer a member. Um, in the words of my dearest best friend and half of Girlfriends podcast, where you probably heard me rant about this already, I felt unsafe for both my ears and for future. I mean, for crying out loud, he said, save me. He's telling y'all, please save me, please. 
And in all seriousness, I am concerned for Future's well-being as he's literally asking to be saved unless he is Cap. And in that case, I'm extremely aggravated because you're perpetuating a life and a lie to kids all across the world that you're doing something that you're actually not doing, which is big capping. Okay? So if you are doing that, then we have a, a huge problem because there is some kid at home right now sitting on their couch slumped off of 30 Percocets. And that I just can't agree with. So all in all, I get the album a three. And that's only for Please Tell Me. I'm never going to discourage anybody to talk about art as it relates to, to their own life. However, when we lie to people and you're literally someone's role model, that's when I have an issue. So, Future, I mean, you can you can rant in the comments below as well and let us know if you capping or if you really live in that life. And lastly, condoms. Yes, that's right. We're going to be talking a little bit about how we're going to revolutionize staying safe. These three British teens, two 14 year olds and one 13 year old came up with a new idea and a new type of condom. So basically it can detect whether or not you have a sexually transmitted disease. Yes. The proposal actually won the trio, the top prize in the UK teen tech awards. And apparently condom companies are running toward the idea to invest in them. So get to the bag, teens, okay? Get to the bag. I wish I was thinking like this at 14 and 13. But there are still a few questions, i.e., would the STIs be detected in just the user or also the partner as well? Like, how does that work? Um, are you, like, kind of dipping in there and dipping out, checking for the color? We, we don't know how it's going to work. Also, there's this awkward question of what would happen if the condom... Um, actually came in contact with two or more STDs, like if you carry your herpes and gonorrhea, is it gonna give you some sort of like tie-dye effect where you just blue, yellow, like is it changing colors? There's a lot of questions there that we have to figure out. So that um, will determine whether or not these condoms really go into production. Also, imagine the condom actually changing colors. Like during the intercourse, you know what I'm saying? Like, what would you do? And oh, and I oh, <laughs> that's what I would do. Like, did that just happen? <laughs> what do you do next? Is that like, like, imagine how awkward that would actually be? I'm just thinking, like, and hold on, let's check for the color. You, I'm not probably about to like throw some bows, honestly. Nuck if you but me, honestly, if, if the thing changed colors and we've already discussed. I don't even know if anybody would agree to actually wear those condoms, but hey. Shout out to those revolutionary kids. Kids are the future. Believe in the children. Believe in their dreams because those kids, they got it down packed. I wasn't thinking about that at all at 13. Oh. Mm, I just hit my balls. Oh. Oh, it's got hot. I gotta get out of here. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I, yeah. If you have the opportunity to attend the late night show exclusive screening of this episode, then you'll see more news that didn't make the show tonight live. So enjoy that. And as always, please follow LNS Approved on Instagram to catch up on more news stories in real time and rant in the comments below. You know, no judgment, nothing. You can talk all of the crap, okay? And we won't have a problem. But just remember one thing. One thing. Can't forget this. Don't at me. <laughs> so we hung out a little bit more at Moods and Music with my girl Keep Saya. Um, and we did a segment called Digging Through the Crates. So you're going to learn a little bit more about how she associates each album with things from like fashion to childhood memories. Take a look. All right, it's Sammy, and we're here with Keith Sia Gibb, a model, as well as um, a daughter of someone or two people who are really affluent um, in the Atlanta music scene, as well as just like globally, like everybody knows me, Gibb, as well as Joy, who's led vocals on a lot of dope projects that you probably heard of. Um, so today I decided to come to Muse Music with you because of that. I'm like, she obviously got like music, you grew up into it, right? <laughs> right. 
So um, we're in the, the store and I wanted to do something like a digging through the crate situation. Mm -hmm. So you picked out five influential records or albums that mean something to you, whether it be your first love, your first, um, or your childhood memory. So we're gonna go through those right now. That's cool. That sounds good. Cool. All right, so first one is your uh, a record that reminds you of your childhood. Like I said, you grew up in the industry pretty much. Okay, so childhood, we're gonna go with. Go through. Okay. okay. I was very young. <laughs> okay. And this album, basically, just it just reminds me of my childhood because this was a time when. Know, my parents were extremely young during this time, so I remember, you know, being in a lot of their sessions, being at the studio with them, being at the shows, going on tour, having to get left at home for, you know, weeks at a time while they go on tour, all that. So this is really triggering. Yeah. What song in particular do you really love off of this album? Or you just like straight through? You can listen. I can listen to this album straight through, but. Um, the ones that are my favorite are Cell Therapy, Dirty South, and um, so. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of home, a lot of the city. You know, we're both from Atlanta. It's not. It's very rare that you see a lot of us here in the city that are actually from there. So, I like that one too. Yes. Okay, let's talk about your first love. Um, <laughs> I hate talking about my first love, but so Leanne with hobbies. Is your love big enough? Right. So the song on this album, Lost and Found, let me tell you, I think I cried to this song <laughs> for like a week straight. It's just a beautiful song. It's really, really sad, but it's a beautiful song. And it's just like, it is, it's, what it says is exactly how I felt, lost and found. You helped, you broke me down, but you helped me find myself. Oh, that's Thanks. deep, that's real deep. Shout out to your first one then. <laughs> okay, fashion. You said this one's kind of difficult for you a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So, actually, I'm not even going to lie to you because I practiced my walk to a couple of songs off of Love Love. This album actually serves as two. I'll just go ahead and say that because this is a very important project. Okay. Um, fashion, we're going to go with spread. I like to walk to that song because of the tempo. Mm -hmm. Very has nothing to do with fashion, but <laughs> I relate. What did you say that you enjoy modeling to? Off the record, we were talking. What is something that, or what type of music do you enjoy modeling to? I like up tempo things because um, it doesn't necessarily matter what you're walking to because the beat is just kind of background noise. You're not walking to the beat. So I like up tempo things. It gives that energy, you know. It gives like the the vibe you need. Like, well, yeah. Okay. So um, we have fashion that we place on here. What about like something that gets you through a really difficult time or stress if you're in a rut? Like okay. So Bobby Caldwell. What you gonna do? Wow, that's a throwback. I love that song. Double thing, yeah. But yeah, I love that song. Okay. And I put that song on. Yeah. If I'm sad, happy, mad, whatever, it doesn't matter. And I have the chopped and screwed version. Oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a sucker for chopped and screwed. I have girl. a lot of random songs and just music and albums. Like I have a whole like file of just albums that are just chopped and screwed. I like to listen to like deep, heavy. Vibes where it's at. Or track music. Or track music. Same. Same. We, we, we share a lot of uh, common uh, taste of music. Now, tell me something that um, makes you want to dance. I know you you be on the ground twerking a little bit. You know what I'm saying? What, what makes you want to like vibe, like dance? Okay. For people who don't know me, I am an extremely big Young Thug fan. Okay. I love Thug. Okay, stand for him all day. That's who I need. I have to hear him. Like even when I shoot, I have to hear him. It's just a vibe. It's the spirit and the music. Yeah. It's like it's genuine. Yeah. And I feel like 
He, he brings that out of me. <laughs> Thug. Who else? Um, Kiwi Longwood. <laughs> you are so good, right? <laughs> and who else? Um, now I ain't gonna say them. That's for real life. What? What they don't know about. We gotta hit them to something new. Something different. <sighs> okay, wait. Kiwi and... Um, Oh no, I can't think of it. But those two, definitely. Solid. Got to. Well, that's it. We digging through the crates to so keep side. I appreciate you. Um, shout out to Moods Music for letting us be here. We have gone through some outcast records, uh, some Goody Mob, Leanne, The Havas. It was great. Like, so we see you got a different taste of music, not just, yeah, pretty, it ranges. So I appreciate that and I appreciate your taste of music. And that was digging through the crates. So Okay, thank you for asking. So like, I've been working out and doing 250 squats every day for the past three months, right? And my ass hasn't gotten any bigger. That's the problem. You've been working your ass off. Okay, now look. No, 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 I'm trying to tell you, I'm serious though. That's not funny, okay? Auditions for America's Next Top Celebrity Side Chick are coming up in two weeks, right? And I cannot come in there with the ass of Kendall Jenner. I'm gonna need some Kim K buns, you know? How am I gonna get a man like this? Look at my booty, look. Nothing, seriously. Yeah, bitch, that's the problem. I Let me get my stash. Wait. Stash of what? Can I trust you? Girl, yeah, come on. Now look, my cousin Pookie, you know, he told me about this triple B cream. Triple B cream? Wait, you talking about your cousin Pookie Pookie. Look, don't worry about all that. It's called Big Booty B Cream. Okay. It's a natural product. You know I'm on my natural shit, girl. All right. It's made with honey and just a whole bunch of natural Juices stuff. and berries. Yes. And all I right. put it on my booty twice a day. Right. And I mean. <laughs> Dang. Okay. Yes. Okay. I don't get girl, that. we got to go get you some. Oh, I'm sorry. Ooh. Well, what you waiting on? Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, bitch. I want my ass to be fat, too. Shit. Ooh, bitch, got my phone. Gotta call Pookie. Girl, come on, that's just Belle. Who is it? It's Sunny. Your cousin, now you're going on the other side. Come on, Pookie. What's up? This my girl, Tracy. We need that good good. Girl, don't worry. He do that to everybody. Oh, Come on, Paul. Get out! It's $35.99. And I ain't got no change. Thank you, Pookie. Mm. Come on, girl. Yay! Come on, girl. Hey. Triple B cream helps with lifting those buns so that you can have that Kim K ass. This honey scented cream can be purchased by your favorite hood cousin Pookie. Side effects can include itchy skin, butt pain, back pain, red hives, scaly like rash on the skin. All purchases are found. Don't bother to contact the distributor. The number has been disconnected. Triple B cream, only $35.99. Get yours now. It was so amazing learning more about my friend Keepsaya Gip, and I hope you learned a lot about what she does and what she's about, a little bit about her journey as we're continuing to write our stories. That's what those features are really, really about. So make sure you follow her and contact her if you need anything from movement training to dance to modeling, creative direction. She does it all. Her Instagram is keepweep. Yeah, follow her. And always stay tuned to the Late Night Show with Sammy Approved. We're on Instagram at LNS Approved. And we'll be back next month with more news, more sketch comedy, and more amazing stories. Thank you. Peace.